Let's go. All right, guys, if you have your Bibles, which you should hopefully, uh, turn to Psalms 1, or Psalm 1, I guess. So Alec kind of talked about this in the Devo he wrote for uh, this morning. If you're not getting those, uh, you can sign up for them and get them emailed to you each day. Uh, but Psalm, the first Psalm uh, kind of stands as a gateway into the entire book of Psalms. Uh, and it's just kind of like laying out some of the, some of the general themes that we're going to see uh, throughout the book of Psalms. And uh, it's basically just these three different contrasts between walking in the way of the righteous or the blessed man, and then walking in the way of the wicked. And we're going to see the contrast between those two things. Uh, so I'm going to read the whole psalm. It's pretty short. Uh, so starting in verse 1, it says this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Uh, for my soap today, I just, I just had a few observations, uh, just things that I... I noticed in this, uh, and the first thing was that uh, del he says his the blessed man his delight is in the law of the Lord, um, and that that idea of like delighting in the law I think has to do with knowing it but also doing it. So it, it's not just knowing and understanding what the law says, but also doing what it says. Uh, and then in that very next line it says, and on his law he meditates day and night. Uh, and I had a, an Old Testament professor who who told me that the the idea of like meditating on God's word in the Old Testament is really like the Hebrew behind it is really like the idea of reciting it, like you're saying it out loud to yourself and, and like pondering it. Uh, so if we're going to meditate on the law day and night, if we're going to recite it and like and think about what it's saying and what it means, we have to know it. Uh, and so an application that I drew from that was just that I need to make scripture memory, memory a greater priority uh, so that I can meditate on the law day and night. Uh, but going forward from there, uh, in verse three, it says he's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. I love uh, this, this picture that the psalmist is painting. He's saying, so this, this man, this blessed man whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on the law day and night He's like a tree planted by streams of water. So think about like a tree uh, in this like dry, like barren desert region, but it's got a river right next to it. So its roots reach down into the water and it's like, it's drawing life up from the water in the river. Uh, so when we meditate on the law day and night on God's word, and when we delight in God's word in that way, uh, it's like we're connected to this vital source of life. Uh, and so God's word is a source of life to us, and we, we remain connected to it by meditating on it day and night. Uh, you know, the, like a tree by the water, we're going to see this contrast here um, between the, the man who delights in the law of the Lord and the wicked. Uh, so the one who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on it day and night is like a tree planted by streams of water. You know, that's, he's rooted, he's established, and he's prospering. He's, he's bearing fruit, and his leaf does not wither. He, he's alive. But then we see that the wicked are not so better like chaff that the wind drives away. So chaff is like, uh, what, what they would do is, it's an agricultural term, but they would uh, gather up all their wheat, uh, and they would thresh it. They'd like beat it with a stick to get everything that they didn't need from the wheat off of it, basically. And the chaff was what, Kind of was kind of left over and kind of just blew away in the wind. Uh, so we have this, the, the tree, it's rooted and established, it's there, but then the chaff is just kind of like blown and tossed about by the wind here and there. Uh, and so like to apply that to ourselves, whenever we obey God's word, when we delight in God's word and meditate on it, we're rooted and established in the word and our, our lives are rooted and established. Uh, but when we don't, we're, we're just kind of blown with the culture, blown with whatever, just here and there. 
And so the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Uh, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So yeah, the, the only application that I got out, that I drew from it today was that I need to make scripture memory a greater priority um, so that I will be able to meditate on it day and night. Uh, but mother prayer, we're, you know, we're encouraging you guys to, to turn the Psalm uh, into a prayer for yourself. Uh, Cause the, the Psalms are, are like the songbook and the prayer book of the nation of Israel. And so my Psalm for the, or my prayer for this Psalm rather was heavenly father. I know that only those who delight in your word and meditate on it day and night are truly blessed. Help me to love your word with an ever increasing affection and devotion. Make me like a tree planted by streams of water, always connected to the source of life, which is your word, and always bearing fruit in my life, not only by knowing it, but by obeying it. Thank you for the grace of Jesus, which guarantees me a place in the congregation of the righteous in spite of my failure to obey. In his matchless name I pray, amen. So uh, what were some of the things that stuck out to the Psalm for, for you guys? Can they unmute themselves? Um, I have a question about verse five. Yes. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteousness. Can you like explain really what that means? Uh, sure. And uh, if you, Ryan, Alec, Brooke, if you guys want to add to what I say, go for it. Um, so uh, he's talking about the final judgment, uh, as far as I understand. Um, so when like when Jesus talks in Matthew twenty five about like the sheep being separated from the goats. Uh, so the wicked will not stand in the judgment. They will, um, they will not last basically like, uh, the, the sinners will not stand, will not be in the congregation of the righteous. So at the end of time, uh, whenever God judges, uh, all evil, uh, the righteous will be saved and they'll be all together. So it will be a congregation of the righteous or assembly of the righteous, uh, versus the wicked will be, will be put away. That's that's my understanding of it. Why does it? But like, why does it say they will not stand in the judgment? Because I understand that like they'll be separated. But didn't God say like at the end everyone will be judged? Yeah, absolutely. I think the idea is more like um, more that they. It's not that they won't be there. It's like they won't stand. Like they they won't. Like, could you guys help me out? I'm having a hard time. No, you're you're right on it. It's like the yeah, not standing. Like the, it's just like the idea of the chaff in the wind. They're going to be blown away. They're not going to be able to stand. So he's continuing that picture of like you're rooted, you know, and and you you're not going anywhere. Versus you're not rooted and you're not going to be able to stand. I I think that's I think that's it. It's just kind of it's sort of poetic language today. So it's we have to kind of do some extra thinking on it, you know, to, to make sure that we kind of understand. So that's a, it's a really good question. Uh, did anybody else have any other questions or observations, anything that stuck out to you? Couldn't it be that it could also be like, you know, how Jesus says, um, uh, and, I forgot where it was, but he says, like, I do not know you when, um, like, uh, when he's judging the people. Like, he'll say, I know you, or I do not know you. Could it also be that? Or it could also be, like, uh, in the book of life, that your name is not written in the book of life, maybe? That the wicked is, name is not written, written in the book of life? I mean, that's the only thing, like, it also could be in my mind. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think it's like, I think it's just like a different way of expressing that same idea, if that makes sense. Is that, is that helpful? Like saying that the, the wicked will not stand in the judgment is a different way of expressing that same idea. It's just like a, in poetic language, like Alec was saying. Is that helpful? Did that answer your question? He's muted, but yes, it does. Great. Fantastic. Uh, something I noticed um, is in verse three, where it says, 
he is like a tree planted by streams of water. And my Wi-Fi cut out, so you might have mentioned this, but um, that's different than, it doesn't say he's like a tree that popped up randomly. So if something, if a tree is planted, then it was planted by someone, and it was planted by someone who had the intention or meant to plant that tree in that spot. And I just, I think that it's really cool that for, for someone who meditates day and night on, uh, who delights in the law of the Lord, who delights in the word, and he, and he, and he keeps it in the front of his mind all day, essentially, um, it's like, it's as if God has planted us by that stream of water. And if we're thinking about, again, poetic imagery in the stream of water, um, it, it connects me to thinking about living water. And a lot of times water is connected to life, especially in the, the desert um, type of climate that they were living in. I mean, that's true anywhere you go, but especially there. And so, uh, and then when it talks about its leaves, it, they do not wither and all that he does, he prospers. It doesn't specifically mention this, but my mind just connected that to bearing fruit, right? Being by the living water, right? It's I'm bearing fruit. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, not because I picked up my branches and walked towards the river uh, or the stream, but that God planted me there. And so in that I have thankfulness and appreciation and joy that God planted me there by the stream. And it's because of that, that he, keeps me going and, and he's the reason he's the one that changed my heart from the inside out to delight in the word um and so so truly there's a there's a part of this to to where the you know the trees roots they find their way to the water um but really when i when i peel it all back and think about it um it just makes me thankful that god planted me there uh in the first place and this may be a stretch, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm fine with that. You're not going to hurt my feelings, but whenever we talk about being planted, um, it made me think about how I was talking about God meant to plant that tree. God meant to plant us where we are right now, right? God meant for you to be born into the family that you were born into. God meant for you to be you know, planted to, to the school that you were going to, um, the friend group that is around you. Um, he planted you with a specific purpose and he desires for all of us to stay close to the flowing stream of living water, right? Stay close to his word, stay close to him, to rely on him for everything that we need and he will provide. Um, and it's just a great reminder that like God didn't make a, a mistake with you or with where you're at and the circumstances that you have. And he has a plan for that. And it's not for you to wither, um, but it's for you to prosper. Um, not that you would become famous and rich and big, but to prosper in his plan and in his, uh, yeah, his ultimate plan um, and for eternity. No, that's great, Ryan. Did anybody else have anything that stuck out to them? Or uh, did anybody else want to share their prayer that they prayed for the psalm? I have a question. In oh. verse 5, uh, in like the first section, it says, therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment. I know that's, I mean, is that talking about um, the like when everyone dies type judgment? And like, uh, I don't know where I was going to go with this, but. Is that what it's talking about? Yeah, there's a, I think there was a note in the ESV study Bible saying that there's some debate uh, about exactly what it means by the judgment, but the, the consensus is generally, yes, it's talking about the final judgment, like when, when Christ will return and judge the living and the dead. Okay, uh, so then this is the second part of my question. Does that mean like whenever Jesus comes back and takes all the Christians back to heaven, does that mean that, like, everyone that wasn't a Christian uh, would, like, just immediately go to hell? Or... Uh, 
You guys can help me out here. Say, say, say it again, Josh. Re- kind of repeat the question. Okay. Um, whenever Jesus comes back and takes all the Christians uh, to heaven, uh, it says right here, therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment. Does that mean that they'll just like immediately go to hell? Uh, I, I believe I can kind of answer it in a way. All right, Abel, take a shot, bro. So, I mean, I don't know if y'all have ever seen the movie Left Behind. Like, the original ones, not the one with Nicholas Bart, or I forgot his name. Um, Nicholas Cage. Um, yeah, not that one. But whenever you watch the uh, in Left Behind, they it, it shows that they left behind a pastor. And uh, so maybe whenever Jesus comes down and takes us all, and what it means by leaving the wicked behind, I don't really think that – I think they will have a second chance in those – whenever we have those seven years of uh, famine and everything. So that I'm, I'm assuming there will be a couple of Christians that will be let down that are chosen by God to stay here to try to convert more people into Christians to get more people into heaven. Yeah, I can add on about that. Um, <laughs> hey, hold, hold on a sec, Josh. Let's just say that um, there's a there are many different uh, kind of interpretations of the Bible when it comes to this kind of idea when we're talking about the end times. the The reality is in in sort of the the just like if we're going to take plain teaching, you know. Not, not everybody even believes that there's going to be this like kind of rapture idea. All of that is, is sort of, sort of debated uh, about a, what, exactly what that's going to look like. And there are different, you know, there are different ideas, but what, what we can know for sure to answer Josh, your original question is that there is, um, there is going to be a final judgment um, where, everybody who has ever lived, there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. Um, and then there's going to be the separation of those who are righteous and those who are unrighteous and, uh, the unrighteous go into what we would understand as an eternal punishment. Uh, and then the righteous would go, anybody who uh, has trusted in Jesus to save them, um, would go to the, um, would go to the, what we know as paradise or, or heaven. Uh, but really then when that happens in, if you look at revelation 21, you have the new heaven and new earth. So it's really like a a new creation that looks a lot more like, but it's just a a renewed earth, uh, that where the righteous will, um, will dwell. So just, so we don't kind of get into the, you know, to the weeds of different raptures and ideas and that, that kind of stuff. Uh, there is going to be a, a judgment and, uh, and at that final judgment, like Braden is saying, unrighteous go to, go to punishment and righteous go to um, paradise. And, and we'll, we'll kind of leave it, leave it at that for now. Um, and we got to understand too, at the time that the psalm was written, that's that's all that they would have that, that David would have understood, or who, whoever was writing this was that there would be a judgment, and um, and that the the righteous would be rewarded, the unrighteous would would be punished. Period. So, great, good, good thinking, though. I mean, all, all of those things are are what we should uh, be dwelling on anytime we we read that kind of stuff. So, good stuff. Did anybody else have any questions, uh, any observations, want to share your prayer from the psalm? Um, I like also the way, it may be just my version, but I like the way the verse 1 is worded. Um, Blesses the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. And I think that's just a really good um, reminder that you, even though we are still sinners down here, if you're a believer, you should be still like trying to be like Jesus. Like you should be striving to um, 
be perfect, even if like because we're sinners, we're not going to ever be perfect. Um, but I just think that's a really good reminder that once you have accepted Christ, there should be a difference and people should be able to tell a difference. And if they can't tell a difference, then you're most likely not a believer. And um, I like also how it explains like you got to surround yourself with people who are like minded, because if you surround yourself with people who are of the way of the world, you're not going to grow anywhere in your relationship with Christ. No, that's great, Sine. Yeah, there's this big, this big contrast between, you know, the one who who walks with the wicked and who sits in their company, and then the one who delights in the word of God. That's really good. Gunner. What did you think about Psalm 1? Um, well, it's pretty much like what Sine said earlier. Um, I really didn't read it that much. But oh, no, you're good, man. I, I kind of thought about what Sine said earlier. And then that's mm -hmm. probably it. Sweet. Um, I actually wasn't able to be at the beginning of the meeting i um but what what psalm are we were we reading uh psalm one oh, thank you for sure man anybody else have anything they wanted to share thing that I thought was was interesting um and I, I think it's I think it's good and right that we um like we go ahead and say you know, like in verse two it says but his delight is in the law of the Lord um and on his law he meditates day and night I think we go ahead and fill in like God's word we kind of say you know we kind of think of the whole scripture uh, and that's that's right and good, and we should meditate on the whole scripture. But I do think it's interesting that the psalmist, what he would have known as the instruction of God is probably just Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, um, which is oftentimes what we as Christians kind of think of as like kind of, I don't know, sometimes maybe boring or, you know, whatever, like, that would have been the law that the psalmist is talking about. And so this really instructs us as Christians to think about the, um, the goodness and the really the teaching and the, and the love and grace and um, uh, all of the above that, that the first five books of the Bible really show us, even though, it might be sort of hard for us to understand and it may take a little extra work for us to read and try and, and try and uh, grasp exactly what's going on in those books. Um, but that, that's what the psalmist is, is talking about here. So I think it's encouraging. Yes, we should read and, and meditate and, and hide the whole scripture in our hearts. Uh, but there is also something special about those first few books of the Bible that teach us something about God and, uh, and his instruction or his law. So anyway, I just was, was thinking about that. I think that's important for us that teaches us, you know, the whole scripture is, um, is good for us to read and to meditate on. Oh, sure. That's awesome. We should do our next devotional series in Leviticus. Done. All right, guys. Well, uh, do we have anything that we need to like announce or remind? I know we got this every day. We've got 
split high school and middle school uh, element on Wednesdays at 7.15. Anything else we need to be reminding them about? Well, we just, uh, Pastor Trammell sent out an email to everybody in our church about these new um, classes. I think we're calling them deeper discipleship classes. Um, and these are just going to be different opportunities for y'all to go deeper is the idea in your relationship with the Lord, learning about God's word, um, and just different things. Um, I know that I'm moderating one just that is talking about discipleship. Alec, is yours on studying the Bible? Yeah. Yes. And then Ryan, I believe, is like answering tough questions. Um, I think that's the one. But I think there are like nine different options for y'all to choose from. But there are only uh, so many spots. And so we hope that y'all will jump on those. Um, and if you just go to our main page, or maybe Alec can put it in the, in the chat link, but you can for sure find it on the main page at championforest.org, and then you'll see deeper discipleship um, classes, and you can register for one. Um, but we're super excited about those. It's not like a huge time commitment. I think maybe we're asking for two hours of your week or something um like as far as like studying the or watching the videos and then well yeah we'll walk through the videos and then whoever signed up for that class then we'll find a time like on a zoom call or something to meet up and just talk about what we're learning and that kind of thing but yeah they're like nine different options i think one specifically for kids so not for y'all um but we're super excited about those and those just launched today so that's just another opportunity for y'all to take advantage of this time uh, that you have at home and uh yeah that was i think the only thing maybe that we had to announce oh if you haven't joined us on thursday yet that is when we are having our trivia uh, at the start of every uh call so Free DoorDash to the winners. Um, yep. it, might be, it might be Red Top this week. Ooh, might be Red Top this week. How about that? Um, some whatever you want. I'm all about the Red Top. I went there and got some cinnamon rolls a couple weeks ago, and they're fantastic. Anyway, I think that's all the announcements, unless y'all yeah. think of anything right. else. Hey, also, uh, I did a little bit of research into the – the verse five or the psalm and whatnot and uh i looked it up and the interpretation is that people will not that is whenever they say that they're not going to stand in the judgment it's basically that god will say that they are not righteous so it's not like they're not going to be judged it's just like they're not going to be in his good judgment i guess you could say yeah so good good stuff oh, thanks Jeremy. that's super helpful like and then afterwards they followed up like they're not going to be in their congregation so that's kind of like what they meant it's kind of you know the same thing yeah that makes sense all right well thank you everybody for being here on that note jeremy would you mind praying us out got it thank you god for this wonderful day thank you for everything you've given us um please bless us with wisdom and insight as we uh as we just um divin deep into your word and uh please bless us with um peace in these dark times and i pray i'll listen to Jesus' name we pray amen amen thanks bro of course thank you yes we'll see you guys later bye, bye. bye, -bye. thank you bye bye, bye.